So um, now for calc segment usage, you can go ahead and see, you can get plots like this, uh, comparing uh, the different, your different samples and their, um, you know, for example, variable gene usage. So that's quite uh, interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. Give them at least two sample inputs, but you can, you can go more as well. Open up the terminal again. And uh, I'll just move into my where my samples are. You know, we've converted them before. So just go right here. And I start my <clears throat> VDJ tools command. And uh, we type in, just like it says here, calc segment usage. Calc segment usage. And we continue typing options. And the only option that I want to include right now is the P, the P turns plotting on, because I want this plot and not just the tables with the information. So we do this. And now we input two, two we, we will input three files in there. Um, so we go ahead and type in the names of our converted files were um, file one, VDJ tools. Um, and I, t I just typed it out right now, pause the rec recording. So file two and file three as well. I gave three input files and now I give an output prefix. We call this segment usage. And um, yeah, you should just press enter and you should be good to go. Yep. There we go. And it finished. So we will have these files now in our folder where we executed it. And you have these plot, uh, these PDF files here with the J and variable regions plotted with this graph. Yeah. So that's quite helpful. Um, I find, you know, there's some issue with the formatting. Once I figure that out what that is, I'll probably make one more video. It, but I think it's, it's, this is very, uh, common just for this uh, plot. We'll go ahead and now do some more analysis and see what else we can do and what kind of information we get out of it. So spectrotype. We can go ahead here and plot the spectrotype for the CDR3 length and uh, the, the the proportion of how much these specific clonotypes make up in that uh, in that repertoire of that sample. So we will go ahead and use this right here. Okay, so again, we type in Java jar, um, the path towards our jar file, which was vdjtools.jar. And now we write in plot fancy spectrotype, the options. Um, you can set the options of how many clonotypes should uh, be displayed and it should not exceed 10. We'll just stick with the default, which is, I think, uh, so it should not exceed 20 and the default is 10 if I'm, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. So now we choose one file sample txt, which is for us, let's say file one dot. And if you remember from the TCRR package that we used, file one had one very, very expanded clone. So this should look good. Uh, we go file one VDJ tools for one.txt and an output prefix spectrotype there we go and it's done now as well there you go open it up and you should now have one more pdf somewhere here right here fancy spectrotype look so zoom out and you see a nice graph how, see how easily it will analyze it all for you. It tells you, you know, this, uh, the color of this um, CDR3 region right here, this clonotype makes up this much. And uh, this is uh, very informative and obviously a vector graph. So you can zoom in and zoom out without losing any quality. Um, again, you can obviously automate all of this to print these images for you in a hundred samples right after another and, you know, analyze it so it's done in 20 seconds or less. And you learn how to do that at nextgenerationsequencinghq.com to write a pipeline like that. So let's have a look what else we can plot. Um, this is what we just plotted. Uh, this is this looks really nice, right? It will tell you the combinations of variable and joining regions that have been combined. And we will now plot this as well. 
So I'll go ahead and type in again uh, Java jar. The path to our VDJ tools Java file. And now with the options, again, you could be um, computing here. Instead of computing the read frequency, it will compute the number of unique clonotypes. But frequency is obviously nicer because it's um, it's more in, it, it it just is better for interpretation of your data uh, because the count can differ depending on you know how large how large that repertoire is. So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, we leave the default options and just give again our file one input and type in a prefix for our output file call this vj usage and oh i printed something wrong yeah i forgot to give the um the routine name that vdj requires plot fancy vj usage plot fancy vj usage and now there's something else wrong i might have mistyped something just forgot to uh, put a space in between the routine name and the jar file. So now it will work through the process and you should have in your folder where you are right now, now a plot PDF, uh, VJ usage, let's use it. There you go. See, and this looks very strange. Uh, obviously, because a huge part of this whole um, VJ usage is just between two combinations. And, you know, let's have a look at, at our file three, because we remember that was much more diverse. So I'll go ahead and change this to file three that has had 4000 clonotypes, whereas this one only had 700 something. So we'll click OK now again. And it's going to plot us another VJ usage file. Oh, it over overrode it for some reason. It didn't uh, it didn't use the the good uh, the prefix? We'll just check how to ch change that in a bit. But you see here, this is much nicer now, uh, much more diverse. Um, okay, so let's have a check why the name didn't work out. All right, it says right here that it should it should be the output prefix, meaning that it should just add the the prefix you add here in front of the sample name and make a new file. It doesn't do that. So um, you can obviously um, change that to do it if you want to have more samples analyzed automatically. And obviously I'll show you guys how to do that at um, next generation sequencing hq.com. But for now, because we're just analyzing uh, individual files, you could just call this VGJ, VJ uh, usage and then file three and then file two if you sequence file two, if you analyze file two. So now we'll go ahead and uh, look what else we can do. Plot spectro type V region. See, you can make something like this, similar to the CDR3 region uh, spectro type that we did earlier, but just using the variable uh, regions. And let's go towards more statistical stuff. So I want to have a look at, um, you know, you can, you can plot this as well, where it just, this just gives you for each sample a nice overview on as well, I guess, how diverse it is. You know, it tells you here these top expanded clones and, um, you can read more about what the graphs mean, um, by reading the documentation. But, uh, I want to now go ahead and see what else we can, uh, do calculate diversity stats. So in this one here, you get a table of different diversity indices. So you get, you get to, um, um, run your, run your sample and it will output a table with the information of the KO estimate, estimate, Efron, Thisted estimate. Actually don't know all of these statistics myself. Shannon Wiener, Wiener index is more, more of a famous one. Inverse Simpson index. We calculated with using a TCR package as well. So let's go ahead and use, um, use this one as well. Here's the command line usage info. So we go ahead and do that. Jar home VDJ tools jar. And we, you know, all, I'm, I'm leaving out this the whole time, but you know, you, you can use it if you want to. Uh, now the options will be calc 
diversity stats and I will again leave out the uh, leave the options on default and provide at least two samples because some of these uh, are uh, I, I, it needs at least two because I think also sometimes it will compare the files with each other for correlation statistics I'm not quite sure if it's already the calc uh, diversity stats that will do that with but it tells us right here that to provide two so we will do that let's go ahead and provide file one bd j i'm providing again all my three files and now i'm going to go ahead and use the output prefix again we call this diversity stats and press enter so it runs all the analysis again and we should find the results in our folder right here with a prefix saying diversity stats let's go ahead and check there we go diversity stats um go ahead and open one of these two files and there we go so you can see now you know for these three files you have the observed mean and the ko mean and you will you can go through here more and then you get the shannon wiener index you get the uh, you get the inverse simpson index so here is a, a nice table that you can imagine you know if you have a whole folder with 100 samples this would be a nice overview to have it will be a nice addition to your uh, bioinformatical pipeline and there is much more that vdj tools can do let's look at repertoire overlap analysis this is something i like a lot this will calculate a pearson correlation for you and compare two files with each other so this is the command line usage for this you have to provide just two samples the two samples that you want to compare with each other so we will now use that one as well we'll go ahead and write down vdj sorry java, java home vdj tools jar and overlap pair and the options will definitely turn on plotting because you want that nice graph and we leave everything else um to the default and just provide two samples let's provide file two i want to use i want to compare file two with file three okay and give it a upper pref prefix overlap file two file three it runs the analysis again and you can open up right here and it should here say overlap there we go and we get a PDF as well that oh I this is a different plot didn't really want that one there we go the overlap scatter plot right here and you can see so this one these two samples actually have some correlation like it has a, a Pearson correlation of 0 0.394 that's actually not bad but this is the um uh, well what does what does it mean it's not bad i mean i, I mean uh, this is a it's a okay pearson correlation meaning that they are they, they do have some overlap um <clears throat> but we can also now uh check what what how their correlation is calculated and you'll see that this actually just means it it uh compares only overlapping clonotypes so that might not suit your experiments okay so having overlapping clonotypes only it, it will definitely make your um it, it's definitely it, something very for very specific experiments and they don't have the option to say i want to compare one entire repertoire with a whole other repertoire and see how similar those two are but um you can write something like that yourself which we can do um which which you will learn in at next generation sequencing hq.com where we'll um, implement other tools as well and you you know you build your own bioinformatical pipeline so you pick and choose what you want to use from vdj tools what you want to use from ea utils what you want to use from tcr r package and learn how to um, use those in combination now you can go ahead and check out nextgenerationsequencinghq.com for a course like that on how to create a bioinformatical pipeline. Um, and I hope to see you guys in another video again. I think I'm gonna make a separate VDJ Tools video because this one just became very long with maybe not too many, too much information, but I hope you learned something. If you have questions, go ahead and post it in the comment section below and see you in the next video.